Hi, this is Jody Drake with the Pratt County K-State Research and Extension Office. And today we're going to be showing you how to pressure can green beans. Uh, one of my favorite things to do during the summer are canning workshops. But unfortunately, we weren't able to do any of those this summer. So I decided to do a YouTube video for you on how to pressure can green beans. Now you might be wondering why do we pressure can green beans? Why can't we hot water bath can them? And that is because of the pH level of our green beans. Any low acid vegetables, you have to pressure can them. And so if they have a certain pH level, things like green beans, things like corn, they all have to be pressure canned. So if you look up on the K-State Research and Extension website, which is ksre.k-state.edu, you will find a whole list of Preserve It Fresh, Preserve It Safe publications that will help you determine how you need to can uh, each and every type of vegetable you can dream of. And so today we are gonna use the one on beans and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that. So that's the one we're gonna use today is the one on beans. And we are going to use some fresh green beans from our garden. These were picked just a couple days ago. And we went ahead and cleaned them by snapping off both ends and then we broke them up into some smaller pieces. We have already rinsed and cleaned them. And we are gonna use the raw pack method. There are directions in this publication for doing the raw pack or the hot pack method. We are gonna use the raw pack method today. We also gathered a few supplies before we started. Uh, uh, Maddie, can you, by the way, this is Maddie Drake. She got roped into helping out today. And she's going to be the comic relief of our video today. Uh, Maddie, do you know what other supplies we had to gather for today? A funnel. Yes, very good. That's a... A jar grabber. That's a jar lifter, very good, uh-huh. Jars. Uh -huh. What did we do to our jars before we were ready to use them? Did we wash them? Yes, clean jars. Yep. Mm -hmm. No dirty jars in this family. And a bubble Freer. stick. This is a headspace measure on one end, and I'll show you how to use that, and a bubble freer on the other end. And we did go ahead and sterilize our jars just by simply washing them in hot soapy water. You could also run those through a dishwasher. Several dishwashers actually have a sterilization um, selection on those dishwashers. You can run them through a dishwasher as well. So uh, once you've gathered your supplies and have everything ready to go, you'll also need some lids and rings. You can reuse jars as long as they don't have any nicks around the edge, if they have nicks, your lids will not seal. You can reuse the rings as well that go around the outer edge of your jars, but you cannot reuse the lids because once that seal is broken, you cannot reuse those lids. So those are a one use only. So we are gonna go ahead and pack our jar with green beans. Like I said, you kind of want to snap them into some smaller pieces and it's just pretty easy. We're just gonna pack them down in there as tight as we can. Now, I mentioned we are using a K-State Research and Extension website uh, recipe today. We recommend only using tested recipes. So our Research and Extension recipes are tested recipes. Other tested recipes include the Ball Blue Book, as well as recipes from the University of Georgia. They are really the gurus when it comes to home canning. They do a wonderful job. They have a, a cookbook that will tell you how to can just about everything under the sun. So I would, uh, So Easy to Preserve is the name of that cookbook. So I definitely recommend that one. Where you do not want to get recipes from is where, Maddie? Do you have any idea? The internet. The internet. Very Blogs. Good. Blogs. Pinterest would be a bad place to get um, recipes. And why is that, Maddie? Because they're not tested. Exactly, because they are not tested recipes. They're dangerous to your health. Very much so. If you have to read a life story before you get to it, don't use it. Good, good advice. Very good advice. Okay, another piece of equipment that's very important to our pressure canning is this huge pot behind me. And what is that, Maddie? A pressure cooker. No, it is not. It is a pressure canner. Sorry, a pressure canner. It is a pressure canner. Now, Maddie brought up a good point. A pressure cooker is also called a, what? what's that thing instant I used to pot. make dinner with last night? Exactly, an instant pot 
or uh, Cuisine Art also makes the same things. Those are called pressure cookers. And even though they come with directions for canning, the USDA does not, I repeat, does not recommend canning in pressure cookers because there is really no safe recommendations for canning in those. So please do not can in your pressure cookers. Do not can in your Instant Pot. Even if they have a button for it, don't do it. Please don't do it. So you'll notice that I am packing those beans pretty tight down into that jar. In fact, I'm gonna get some muscle behind it because I wanna pack as many beans down in there as, as I can because our next step, what's our next step? Pour in the water. Yeah, we're gonna pour in some boiling water and I don't want those beans floating to the top. So I'm gonna take my headspace measure and this last notch is an inch. And according to my directions in my K-State Research and Extension uh, publication here, I need a one inch headspace. So from the top of the jar to the top of my beans, I'd be an inch and I'm just about there. I'm gonna see if I can pack a few more in. Squeeze a few more in there. Maddie, you wanna bring our boiling water over? Now, before we add the water, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and this is totally optional, but our directions say we can add a half a teaspoon of salt if we would like. And I like a little bit of flavor. So I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of salt. And then I'm gonna let Maddie go ahead and add the use your funnel. water. Yes, use your funnel. Now I can get seven pint jars, these are pint jars, into my canner. I've already done the other six. So this will be the last jar and we'll be ready to put the lid on the canner and get it started. Now Maddie's gonna take the other end of this and free the bubbles because we don't want any oxygen left in that jar. If you, leave, if you don't do this step, you have risk, run the risk of the oxygen pushing that lid and breaking the seal in your jar. And we don't want that to happen. So she's gonna do the best she can. That's a little hard to do with beans. And then we're gonna have to push those beans back down in that jar and measure our headspace again. Now we have washed and rinsed our jar and our, I mean our lid and our ring. And I know in the good old days you used to have to boil those lids and rings. However, Ball came out with new sure tight lids and you don't have to do that. So be sure and read those directions on those lids. They will tell you just wash and rinse them and you're good to go. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that on there. And she's gonna screw that band on until it's fingertip tight. You don't want to get it on too tight. Just screw it on as tight as you can with your fingertips. There you go. And she's going to stick it down into the last open slot in our canner. Good. Then we're going to put our lid on. Seal it up. Okay, welcome back to our kitchen. And right now our green bean jars are in the pressure canner doing their thing. Uh, I have a dial gauge pressure canner. So what that means is that I followed the chart on the back of our research and extension publication that told me what I needed to let that dial gauge get to, what pounds of pressure I needed to let it get to, and then how long to let it uh, to cook in there. So that um, chart is based on our altitude, and believe it or not, Pratt, Kansas does sit above 1,000 feet of altitude. We're about 1,200 feet here in Pratt, Kansas. So that told me I needed to let that dial gauge get to 11 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes. So I've only actually got another couple minutes uh, left on my timer here. Once that timer goes off, I'm just gonna turn off my burner and I'm gonna let this canner set 
until this middle um, seal goes down by itself. I'm gonna let it naturally cool by itself. Once that happens, then I know it's gonna be safe to take the lid off and take my jars out. And we will um, come back to the video at that time. But in the meantime, you need to be sure and follow your manufacturer's directions for your canner. For instance, my canner tells me before I even put this weight over that valve, I needed to let the steam escape for about 10 minutes. And so I did that before I put that weight on and then my dial gauge started to climb up to the 11 pounds of pressure. Now, speaking of dial gauges, you need to have those tested once a year. Your extension office should have the ability to do that. I have a, a gauge tester here in my office. It takes me five minutes to do that for you. Uh, it does not take long at all. If your gauge is off by more than two pounds, we do recommend that you get those um, replaced. We have a hardware store here in Pratt that usually carries those, or you can get those replaced by um, online sources as well. And we can help you find sources to replace those. But again, we do recommend that you get those uh, tested at least once a year. So, like I said, I've got about another minute and then we'll turn off the burner and then we just have to wait for it to cool down naturally. So, we'll be back. Okay, we are now ready to take our jars out of the canner. and We know it's time to do that because the center valve in the middle of my lid has gone all the way down. You have to let it do that by itself because you don't want to rush uh, taking the lid off. So we know it's safe to take the weight off at this point. And we're just going to slide this lid off. There we go. And then you'll need your jar lifter. I'm going to carefully lift these jars out. And then I have a towel all ready here to set them on. And we just want to let them cool at room temperature. And let the jars finish sealing here on the countertop. Now I love canning green beans because I think nothing tastes better in the winter time than some home canned green beans. you do want to give yourself plenty of time to do this because it does take a little bit of time to can your own green beans. So again, the K-State Research and Extension website is ksre.k-state.edu and you can find all of our publications on that website. And I hope you enjoyed our video today. Good luck canning these at home and it's been nice canning with you today.